Recently, Elon Musk went on the attack. He went on the attack for OpenAI and ChatGPT. He started off by talking about the dangers of artificial intelligence, which I think for anybody in this space, if you don't have a sense of nervousness around this technology and what it could do to society long term, especially once we reach a level of general intelligence and even super intelligence, then I think you're not thinking this through enough. But he went a step further and he actually went on to Fox News and talked about launching his own open AI competitor called Truth GPT. But you can see where his line of thinking it was. And I think it's interesting that he went on to Fox news to launch this. He's been a proponent of not only AI controls, but also the fact that he says that ChatGPT, specifically the older version 3.5, was quote, too woke. That means too liberal or left leaning. So there are a few things here to pull apart. One, I think Elon Musk is a brilliant marketer. Tesla has never spent a dime on marketing or advertising for their cars. They're one of the best selling auto brands on the planet. And so I think we can't dismiss things that Elon Musk does as being crazy or off his rocker, right? I think we have to take it and think about what he's trying to do. And it's pretty brilliant because most of the tech community is liberal and left leaning. So what he's doing here is he's pitting the Republican right against the liberal left in his approach to AI and trying to build his own system. And here's the real reason I think he's building his own GPT competitor. If you've watched the recent AI day releases from Tesla, they're actually working on something called Tesla bot. And it's a humanoid robot that they plan to have for $20,000, $25,000 that anybody can have in their home. It'll work in factories. It'll help you around the house and be a companion to millions of people. And there's a problem with this though. While Tesla has a vision system to help this humanoid robot navigate the world around it, it's missing a key component. And that's a brain, something that can identify an object. It can understand that a can will fall on the ground because of things like gravity and physics. They can write recipes that can understand human language that can have a conversation with the people around it. And in order to do that, he needs a large language model. And he thought he had that with OpenAI. He was one of the early investors and one of the early founders of the company. And he had founded the company on this concept that it would be open source and free for everyone. But the OpenAI team quickly found out that that's almost impossible, especially if you want to compete in this landscape, because the capital required in order to train these large language models like GPT-3, GPT-4 is tens of millions, if not billions of dollars. So as an open source project that's a nonprofit, it's almost impossible to raise enough capital to actually pull this thing off. So they got this capital infusion of $10 billion from Microsoft. Now this was great because it could take the company, it gave them the capital they needed to build this up, but it also means that they have a shareholder that they have to report to. And now there are caps still, and the base company is still technically a nonprofit, but it has the ability to create some shareholder value, not only for its employees, but also for investors like Microsoft. Now, what this means is that Elon Musk can't use OpenAI to build and train its own bots because it's no longer open source. It's no longer something that the general public has access to, nor do I specifically think it should be. I think it's great that there training this model out in the open and that everybody can see it and use it and understand what's happening. But I don't think this is something that should be open source because it's such a powerful thing. We don't know if this is actually artificial general intelligence and by most measures of the word, it might be. It gets already passed the Turing test. It's passed the MCAT, the bar exam, all of these high threshold bars that we've set for ourselves as humans to understand how intelligent we are and how much logic and reasoning we can apply to a problem. Problem, it breezes through those. Now, I don't think it's conscious. I don't think it's a real person trapped inside of this alien neural network body, but there's something going on there. And I think that scares a number of people and it should because there's this concept called fast takeoff. And that's this idea that at some point we're going to reach artificial general intelligence and then quickly surpass human intelligence with these models. And once that happens, we could reach a point where job losses are in the millions and you could even have a point where society as a whole ends because the AI determines that we're a problem that needs to be eliminated. Now, maybe that happens six months from now. Maybe it's 60 years from now. We don't know because we haven't studied these models and their performance enough to understand that. There's also this idea of truth. What is objective truth? You can step back and think about the things that are true in your own life or the things that you take as being true. But I guarantee if you talk to most other people, they're not going to agree on those same things for themselves. It's subjective. And one can argue that 
that things like mathematics and maybe parts of physics are objective truths. But beyond that, it gets really fuzzy. And so if you think about it, OpenAI is doing a real service to the world by training these neural networks and these models out in the open. But it also means no one is ever going to be happy with the outputs. Or I shouldn't say no one, but everyone will not ever be happy with the outputs of these models. Someone that's far right-leaning politically is going to complain if it gives a left-leaning answer and vice versa. And the fact of the matter is most things in life are more nuanced than that. There's some truth to both sides. There's some things that aren't black and white like that. And I think GPT is getting better at making those distinctions and showing the nuance and the detail that we have in these answers. And I think longer term, the approach to this is gonna be to give power to the people. If you want a GPT model that has your same beliefs and your same values, you're gonna be able to steer it that direction and it's gonna give you the type of information that you want. I also think this is really dangerous because it puts you into yet another thought bubble, just like social media does today. The people that we interact with the most and that we talk to the most on social media are likely the people that think the same way we do. And that's not how you grow as a person. That's not how we grow as a society. We have to be able to sit back and have debate. We have to have discussions, arguments, disagreements, all those things in order for us to get anywhere as a society. And so while I think steerability is cool in the short term for these AI models, I also think it's really damaging potentially to humans and society. I think we need those nuanced details. I think we need something to argue about and disagree on. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. As always, I'm Brian Levitt. This is All Your Tech AI. I'll catch you next time.